Let's load back into the Wildland Shaman. Hmm, I think something broke, because you should be able to hear the game. Hold on, why did this break? Uh, stand by. This should be... This, I think? Fixed it. Alright, um, I think I just rested here at the tavern. Now, what am I doing next? Uh, did we do this? Oh, I have to talk to Wolchef because we finished the uh, thing that he was looking for last time. Gather allies. Go to Blackwing, Blackwing Library. Go to Horgus's Mansion. Okay, and I gotta go to the Market Square. Okay. Lots of stuff to do. Uh, Wolchif is... In the kitchen? Yes. <clears throat> Psst, look, Chief. I got something to show you. Ta-da! A <laughs> real beaut, isn't it? He had the thing that he said he... Of course he had the thing he said he didn't have. So you did betray the thieflings. Oh, that cuts me deep, Chief. You and I saw who the traitor was. It's just that when we robbed the shop, I went in first and took what I wanted. Nothing wrong with that. Although, of course, I did think about hiding the moon and just taking myself off somewhere warm when all this blows over. But only because I want to see the world. Is it a crime to want to travel? Huh? Is that what counts for treachery these days? Uh, and remind me why this is so important. Do you really not remember it? Oh, I thought you would appreciate it. It's from the old man Fileman, the owner of the Ancient Trees and Wonders shop. It's the pride of his collection. The Moon of the Abyss, an amulet with a rare crystal crafted by an unknown maker. When I think of how much this thing is worth, it makes my head spin. Oh, and how did you manage this? <laughs> Thieves have their ways. Okay, well, why didn't you give it to Karis? What? So she would slay me right away, you mean? You saw how antsy she was over Canabras and all this. So I did it. I took the moon of the abyss. But I didn't go to Erebeth. And Big Sister wouldn't hear my explanations. She doesn't have the time. I even thought I'd hide the moon somewhere, and then when all the noise had died down, I'd go get it and make a run for it. I'm sick of the thieflings, and they never appreciated me anyway. Hey, well, you know you can't sell it, right? <laughs> Why, he asks? It's expensive, pretty, and you know, it's my amulet, actually. Not meaning I stole it, but I, I mean, this is my inheritance. My grandma and I were poor. All we had was a jewelry box with the moon in it. She used to store it under the floor in the basement, and she'd take it out sometimes just to look at it. <laughs> she was always nicer when she had a few drinks in her, so I could ask her things then. 
One time I asked where she got it from, and she said it was from a demon. You know, the demon who was my grandfather. He said the moon was to be passed down. My ma was good for nothing and nobody, so that's why grandma decided to keep the amulet for me. She used to say it would be mine when I grew up. But she couldn't wait until I grew up. She squandered my inheritance when she became a drunk. Took it to Fileman's shop and pawned it. He gave her some coppers for it, and she didn't even haggle. Just grabbed them and ran back to the tavern before last orders. I've been going to Fileman's to look at the moon ever since I was a kid. He chased me away, but I just kept going back, so eventually he gave up. He didn't skimp on security. The place was like a fortress, so he wasn't worried about a street rat like me pinching anything. Even when I got more skilled, I couldn't get any closer to it. One day, I had no one to go with. Another day, there were only oafs who'd never stolen anything more than a church donation box. But when Charisme had planned everything out, I, I realized I had a chance to get the moon and move away from here. Maybe to Garen, I, I hear it's warmer there. I've stayed with the family for too long. Hmm. Well, I'm probably not either one of these. Not sure if I want to go with three or if I want to go with six. Or maybe seven. That's kind of the neutral thing. Let's go with. S Actually, you know, let's go with seven. Allies, friends, it's all a load of crap. Life brings us together, forces us to make plans, do whatever it is we do, but it's a safe bet that this ain't forever. I might be a traitor, but the others. <laughs> Are they any better than me? Melround had a good reputation in the family. He was trusted, and you see what happened. If you abide by the law, anyone can rob you. So you need to break the law first when no one expects it, and run before you go soft and get too attached. He, you know, he's got quite the outlook on life. Whatever you think, I owe you. I'm not just a thief. I have my own business selling things. Thanks to you, I'm still in the family, and they... Well, I mean, we have the black market sewn up in this city. It's a good way to sell valuables. Mm. So, if you need anything, a scroll or something, just say the word. I have a little portal to our people in Erosian. You put a note there, and you get what you need. I can't get you anything big, but what they do have is all high quality. Nothing's too good for you, Chief. What's mine is yours. For a price, of course. Well, all right, let's see what he got. Uh, are you really staying in the party or waiting for a chance to run off? As if I could. There are demons and dangers around every corner. Don't you worry, Chief. I'll work off my debt, honestly. I won't stab you in the back or girl. go on the run with your money. If you buy my wares, I won't have to leave at all. Um, all right, well, show me what you can get. What do you have in your store? I think I have some stuff to sell anyways. Um, I don't have any gnomes. Oh, there's some wands, a couple scrolls, some lockpicks. I don't really see anything that I'm really super interested in. Oh. However, that's going to go, that's going to go. I'm going to hold on to that. I'm going to hold on to that. Those are going. Oh, here, let's hit this button. There we go. That'll get rid of all my junk. Yep, we're hanging on to both of those. All, oh, oh. Now I'll be okay without torches. That's fine. Okay. Oops. Watch out for trouble. Alright, yep, that's 
that's the party for now. Those are the only five people we have. Eventually we'll get six. But for now it'll just be five. Hmm. Okay, so we did the, this last time. The Tower of Estrad. Done those things up here. So the only place that we have to go uh, is to the market square. We gotta start moving the stuff. Trophy. Oh. oh, everybody hit the bar. Cover me, all right. Are you set to trip? No. Yes, you are set to trip. Okay. Into the fray. Is that you or is that you? What? Nice. Look at that sneak attack damage. Well, Jeff, you're the best. That claw of Jiska's a good weapon, even if he can't make full use of it yet. Oh, you know what? I never looked at his spell book for that. Um, yeah, I guess I'll leave the mage armor on him, but I'm going to put a second grease in instead of the color spray. That'll fix next time I rest. What about you? either. Man. Slacking off here. Alright, let's put a bless in there. Um, level two spells. We'll put that in the free spot. And we'll do um, let's do a couple of My spells also. Man. Right, so I'm going to do that. Uh, and then for mine. I think we're going to do a little bit more like necromancy type spells with him. So we'll do one of these and we'll throw in a bark skin for buffing as well. You don't have any spells yet. So you're, okay. I have to rest to get all these back, but that's okay. And you don't have spells. Okay. Uh, yep. None of this stuff is really worth picking up. The weight to price ratio just is too much. Okay. All right. Yes. Challenge. There was cracks up here after a magically induced earthquake struck the land. Well, that was 
fighter is really save the last one for me. Practice my combat abilities. Um, let's try. Yep, let's have you rush the archer. Oh, this is going to be good. That's a lot of guys on here. <laughs> yep, yeah, get this guy. Distract them for me. Uh, Lindwag. No match for me. The inheritor, guide my blade. Oh, wide open. What do you guys have? Regular weapons. Oh, we'll take the gold and the ring. And we'll take the composite longbows because those are worth 100 gold pieces. Keep your calm. More stuff. Oh, what's this? Can oh. we retreat already? Time to share your treasures. And we're still. Save all the soul. Oh. Almost got here in time to save all the soldiers. I hear the voice of the spirits. Magnesium Turinos. Oh, I was supposed to be looking for her. This guy, this is the person that, um, where'd he go? You? Yeah. Foreign was looking for her. All right, let's see what she says. The elf hunched up next to you is clutching a small but deep punch wound. Her appearance is quite remarkable. Her skin is blacker than any Garundis. Her teeth are fanged. Her hair is gray as a crow's. Her crimson eyes glare at you with a gleam of malice. What are you looking at, soldier? I like what you see. I, who are you? There's no point in you knowing, soldier. Trust me. The answer would only bring you misfortune, and it would still wouldn't be of any use to you. I'm a wonder you won't ever meet again. Uh, I mean, there's no way I'm getting this. I gotta roll a 15 to get it? Let's try it. Okay. Uh, what's with your appearance? A demon's handiwork. Some shrieking spawn flew across the sky, raining corruption down upon us. I was caught in the attack. It's fine. It'll go away soon. Uh, I know who you are. You're Kalesa, a cultist of Discari. That's a lie. I loathe demons and kill any I come in contact with or come across. Take a closer look. Damn. It by one. Um, her words sound a lot like lies. They probably are. Why would foreign slander you? You're asking questions that are dangerous in and of themselves. I urge you to stop. The more you know about me, the higher the chances that a traitor's dagger will find its way into your back. So... Do I believe her, or do we just attack her? What do we do? Tell me, tell me your thoughts. Now mind you, this is supposed to be a sort of evilish character. 
I feel like he probably just attacks me. But then again, why does he do what Forn says? I don't know. Alright, well, if you're not convinced, I'm not convinced. Here we go. See what happens. She tries to block your attack with her bow, but the sturdy wood snaps with a resounding crack. Uh, she falls like a bird shot out of the sky. Blood bubbles from her mouth, and with the last of her strength, she forces out the words, Soldier, take the... Don't let them forget my story and the dark faith. Her hand reaches under her cloak, then emerges once more, but instead of a dagger, she is clutching some crumpled papers that she forces into your hand, then she falls silent forever. What have we done? We may have made a terrible mistake. All right, let's see what this says. Nope, it's not that. Where is... These are in alphabetical order, right? So, yeah, there it is. Whoever's reading this, know that my name is Kalesa and I was an elf until my last day. When I lived in Kionan, our blessed land, I witnessed a great number of injustices and crimes against, con against conscience. Yeah, you did make a whoops. This is all your fault. A great number of injustices and crimes against conscience. Even we elves are not absolutely pure, and to the best of my abilities, I fought against these wrongs, bringing justice to those that had evaded the law. While I was not alone, we were few, and we remained in secret. We called ourselves the Sunset Wasps. We re revered Callistria, and in her name we exacted vengeance upon those who had lost all shame. But we had been deceived. We were pawns of a vicious priestess of Discari by the name of Anemera. She manipulated us, lied to us, hiding under the guise of the oldest and wisest of us. At her behest, we spilled the blood of the innocent, not the guilty. When our transgressions were discovered, we became pariahs, monsters in the eyes of our people. Anemera revealed her true identity and offered her patronage. All save for me agreed, and I am ashamed of their choice. But what brings me even greater shame is that when my former comrades approached me, I, would, I could not find the strength to draw my dagger and take my own life. I wish I had. I was taken captive and brought to the world wound. There, our new mentor, mistress taught us the ways of evil and darkness. We studied sin, and I learned alongside the others. At first, I was controlled by means of magic, but then, when you are forced to torture prisoner after prisoner, when you lose count of their seemingly endless number, something, something snaps inside you, and you cease struggling. And that was the moment of truth. Read carefully, for this revelation is the reason for my writing these words. I fell into the embrace of the dark fate. A mysterious curse hangs over Elvenkind. Whenever one of us sinks through certain depths of evil, they turn into a drow. We were lied to. The Dark Elves are not a degenerate, flawed branch of our people. They are not a parody envisioned by the Dark Gods. They are us, and their sins are ours. We cannot renounce our responsibility for them, because every elf, every single one, has the potential to become a drow. I expect that this truth will be dangerous. Among the elves, there are many who are powerful and influential, and I fear that they will seek to bury this revelation and destroy all who know of it. But I believe that the truth is greater than gain. I always have. Farewell, and believe in truth. Um, so she actually was not bad, but was sort of bad? Um, interesting. Well, maybe there's more to this story that we'll find out later. We'll see how this goes. Knowledge or this might also just be the victory. Uh, Closet longbow and Ooh. leather armor. That's a composite longbow plus three. Oh, dude. Oh, she was using Finian the talking weapon. Well, I'll move Finian to somebody else and give her this composite longbow plus three. It doesn't have cold iron, so it's going to struggle against the, de the damage reduction that, uh, that demons have. Yeah you, yeah, you said the wrong thing, but look at the cool weapons that I got out of it, right? Like, that's, I mean, if we're going chaotic neutral, that's kind of what we're going for here. I mean, oh, it, was, it was, you know, marginally, morally not acceptable, but I got cool stuff. So you're going to equip that. Is that. I'm assuming that's better. Yeah, plus 10 to, to each of her attacks. 
1d8 plus 6, so 7 to 14 damage as the base. Yeah, way better. Okay, cool. Um, Alright, so who's getting Finian? Probably you, actually. Yeah, let's make him turn him into a rapier then. Yep, so now it's a 1d6. Yeah, so we're gonna give you that. So you're gonna get Finian. Uh-huh, uh-huh. All right, whoops, where's this go? Oh, there's something hidden down here. Oh, there it is. Alright, cool. Got some stuff to sell. Alright, we're not leaving yet. There's more to do here. Because all I did was go from here to here. And then to go down into here. Okay, so back across there and then to the right. So back this way. To the right. There are many roads to success. Oh, yep. I found more marauders. Let's go. They will hey. break against our resolve. Um, marauder, rookie, rookie, and illusionist. Okay, we gotta get that illusionist first. Blue, you try and get to the illusionist. Lindwag, you also hit the illusionist. The hell beg me to stop! I gotta get my tank out on this guy because he's the gonna rage. Take you. And we'll put the you spirits on demand your blood. Cover me, all right? And you are well, a little tough to resort to brute force. <laughs> oh, who hit him for twenty-four? The guy with the great sword. Of course he did. That's rude. Illusionist. That's gonna make this a pain. Okay, let's hit this so that. The world in crimson. That'll make it so everybody's harder to hit. Um, yeah, we can spend one of these. Okay, yeah, we don't need to do anything else there. You're good. Seven. Dude, nice. All right, now I will help where I can. Uh, oh, that's right. Yep. Okay. Do I have potions? That'll work. Where does this go? Well, this just goes up to where I started from right here. Okay. Oh, that's an exit. I don't want to exit. We'll make this quick. She won't oh. feel a thing. Cutscene. I don't know. Can we really do this? Listen, we don't have a choice. There are demons everywhere. What else would you have us do? A group of knights surrounds a young elven girl. She is dressed in rags that barely cover the hideous scars on her body. The beggar girl is on her knees, watching placidly as the people argue heatedly around her. It is as if she... It is as if she doesn't sense the looming threat at all. 
A black crow flies in agitated circles above her head. In Iomade's name, we're sorry, girl, but it is our duty. We have to do this, not for our own sake, but for the sake of everyone who can still be saved from the demons. If we don't win this battle, you won't have long to live anyway. They're insane! We've got to do something! I agree, they are insane. I understand. You're scared. You feel powerless. You think this will help. You don't have to justify yourselves to me. Just do what you've decided to do. Uh, what's going on here? We... We... Our weapons barely scratch the demon's hides. We're sacrificing this girl to Iomade so we can consecrate our weapons with her innocent blood and gain the power to destroy the spawn of the abyss. That seems like something that, you know, one of like the super good gods would not want you to do. That doesn't seem like something that they would want you to do. It's extreme, but we have no other choice. We have to defend this city somehow, or else we'll all perish, including her. Um, see, the thing is, I'm really good at intimidating people. Uh, sheath your weapons and step away from her, or else. Whoa, whoa, no need for that. Yeah. Please, don't fight. All of you are good people, defenders of the city. Please don't hurt them. They just made a mistake. The knights look at each other and take off running. They're gone. And they all lived. I was sure that someone would die today. So many people have died here already. But we are still alive for some reason. Strange, isn't it? But you shouldn't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm just a silly girl, really. I don't trust her. She isn't what she seems. What she would have us believe she is. That is no simple-minded child before us. Well, we'll see. Call me Ember. I live here, on the streets, for many years now. But there's nothing to say about me. I don't think you're ordinary. No, don't be silly. I'm very ordinary. Well, I know different types of tricks, but Soot taught me those. Now Soot here, she truly is unusual. She's clever and she can talk, but only to me. She teaches me magic tricks and lots of other stuff. I don't know what I'd do without her. Uh, magic tricks, you say? You can prove useful in fighting demons. I'll be able to protect you from insane soldiers on the streets. Come with me. I must have misheard. This girl? Join our party? What could we possibly want with this dirty little beggar? She's a little prejudiced. Sure. Let's go. All right. Now we added Ember. This what do you do? Must end. You do magic. All right, well, we don't want that one. Um, you are a stigmatized witch. Uh, let's look at your class. What do you do? You have, oh, you start with point blank shot and precise shot. Okay, so that's good. You have the Raven Familiar. Simple weapon proficiency. Blackened is your. I think they, cur they have a curse. Minus four penalty on weapon attack rolls, but you add the burning hands to your list of spells. Interesting. Um, Alright, so let's look at your. What do you have in your spell book? Right now, burning hands, cure light wounds, ear piercing screen, and mage armor. Okay, I'm guessing you don't wear armor? No, you don't wear armor. Just a plain crossbow, 